Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning and welcome. It's Nurse Richard. Thanks for joining me. Um, two ears in this one, both quite interesting, very difficult ones. It was one of those slimy, gooey type ones. Does get a bit more firm, a bit more further in. Um, visually, it does get a little better further in as well. Um, but at the start, with you, there's quite a few hairs in the way of this. Um, but it was, I was tempted to put some oil in this, but it was quite a small ear. Um, as you can see, the, the suction tube, which is the, the full size tube, only just fits in there. There's not much gap either side of it to wiggle it around a bit. It's what makes these kind of ones a bit tricky. Um, but it's quite hairy as well. Uh, so for hairy and narrow ones, when you put oil in there, it just tends to go everywhere and just makes makes it really difficult to see what you're doing, which is difficult anyway in a small ear, um, but particularly so when you're drowning it full of oil, it just, just goes everywhere, it makes a mess, and you're forever coming out cleaning the camera. Um, but yeah, it, it does get a bit clearer um, as time progresses. Very dark as well, isn't it? Um, anyway, that's pretty much all I can tell you about these. You'll, what, you'll be able to see what's going on. As I've said before, my channel's about other things. You, you don't necessarily, there's only so much you can say about watching earwax come out. You, you guys have watched all these videos, most of you anyway, who are watching now. I've seen a load of them before. Um, so I'm not gonna go through what earwax is and all that, do you know what I mean? Um, that's why I think it's good that there's lots of channels out there. There's, uh, you're free to choose whichever one you like to watch. Some people like watching um, ones that are more medically based, a bit more, um, uh, scientific and medical information, which is great. Uh, I try to keep it a bit more light-hearted because um, you, you can go all the way uh, elsewhere for stuff like that. And so it's a free, it's a free country. <laughs> you can go where you like. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I'm up to this weekend. Now, it'll have already happened <laughs> because I record these in advance. About a fortnight usually. I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at keeping ahead of time. So just in case something happens, or I go on holiday, or heaven forbid, get on well. There's always some videos in advance. I don't like leaving. I'm not, I've never been a last minuter. Uh, always like being prepared like a Boy Scout. Dib, dib, dib and all that. Uh, so these are in advance. Um, it's just before Easter, uh, as it stands at the moment when I'm recording this. It'll be after Easter when it's released. Um, and every Easter we have a tradition that uh, we like to go up to Scotland because that's where my sister lives. I just have one sister. Uh, she's a couple of years older than me. Uh, and she's lived in Scotland for more than 20 years now. Um, married a Scotsman, but hey, oh, nobody's perfect. <laughs> no offence to anybody Scottish. Uh, I am joking, of course. But she did used to live all the way up in Aberdeen, right in the northeast, because uh, she worked in the oil industry, still does to some extent. Um, but getting to Aberdeen from anywhere in the UK <laughs> is very difficult. It's a long way from anywhere. Uh, it's really remote up there on the northeast coast and it's flipping freezing too. <laughs> um, but she moved down to just south of Edinburgh is where she lives now, in the, um, in the borders, which is a beautiful part of Scotland. There aren't many parts of Scotland that aren't absolutely gorgeous. Um, but she's very lucky, got a, a nice big house there with, with her own grounds, even got her own forest as well. <laughs> uh, so every year we go up there at Easter time. I mean, we go up there other times, obviously. We all go there every Easter and we always done, or um, well, my dad has always done a, an Easter egg hunt uh, along with my sister for the, for the kids. Uh, I don't think they believe in the Easter Bunny anymore. <laughs> the youngest two are um, uh, 10 and 11, so I think our days of believing in the Easter Bunny are gone, unfortunately. Wow. Um, but we still, because she's got such big grounds, we do a, a, a big Easter egg hunt. Uh, leave them all over the place, little clues, and my, my, my dad even does the little treasure map for them. Uh, and they, they enjoy that. It, that's if the dogs don't find them first. Um, but the um, <laughs> it's been a tradition that my dad every year did this big Easter egg hunt. And again, he used to, he, when they were little, he used to give them a little map. Um, <laughs> one year, he gave, them, um, he gave them this map, and he said that the last uh, secret Easter egg was hidden uh, in, in under a tunnel in the house and the only way to get in that tunnel under the house to get to this secret cave where this last egg was hidden was in the wheelie bin. <laughs> so, so some of the kids, it, it was the paper recycling bin, it wasn't a dirty bin. Uh, so the kids actually did climb in, 
climb into the bin <laughs> to, to try and find this hidden tunnel uh, to find this last egg. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a practical joke in my dad. I think, I think that's probably where I get it from. But uh, it's a lovely part of the world, Scotland. If you've never been, uh, then you should because it's, it's really nice. It's, it's extremely stunning. Um, I mean, I like where we live in the northwest of England. It's, um, it, well, it's home, isn't it? Everybody likes where home is, you know. Um, if you don't know what it's called, I've never told you before, the town I was raised in is called Lee, which is famous for rugby and coal mining and uh, cotton industries. It's part of the Industrial Revolution. Where I live now is a little village outside of it called Lowton. Um, it's, it's only a smallish village. Uh, famous for not much, to be honest, because there's, no, there's not much there. <laughs> Just a couple of pubs in a shop. Um, I tell you, I tell you what, what I didn't make, make a few notes at all ordinarily, but I'll, I'll tell you a few interesting facts about where I am. So where I was, uh, where I live now in Lowton, which is where I went to school. Like I said, the next village from where I was raised. Um, famous for a few things, probably most notably, it's, it's all the land around it. Is, it was owned by certainly a lot of it anyway. It was to do with a, a place called Byron Hall or Byron Manor, and that was the home of the Byron family and the. But one of the members of the Byron family called John Byron uh, was a, a famous poet and I believe he invented shorthand or certainly invented one of the most popular if not the most popular version of shorthand I think that's that's what they're quite well famous for uh, I've had a, a few pop stars come from this small village as well um, I think the Ting Tings so one of the Ting Tings came from here that's not my name I think if you, if you remember that one um, and there's a band called the Lottery Winners Go and check out their album if you're not listening to it, it's great. They're a, a local band and they just had a, a UK number one album. They're good, they're called the Lottery Winners, you check them out. I went to the same school as them, I don't know them, met them a few times. Lovely folks, but uh, really good music. Um, but obviously, as you know, I was a musician, but there is quite a, a hotbed of, of musical talent around here. It's really weird and really varied. Um, the town I was brought up in was the home to um, Georgie Fame, anybody remembers him. Um, from the 60s, that's what I say, yeah, yeah, etc. And it was the birthplace and of uh, the Buzzcocks, Pete Shelley, who was one of the founding members of the Buzzcocks. In fact, there's a mural of him um, in the centre of town, or a mural, as some people around here call it. Uh, so yeah, the Buzzcocks, they, they started around here. Uh, who else? The next village along was the home of, um, I don't, he doesn't live there anymore, I think he lives down south, somewhere at Bosch, was the home of Rick Astley as well. He lived on here couple of miles up the road from uh, from me that's where he was brought up um, so yes yeah, very varied <laughs> the people that you get coming from <laughs> uh, from our part of the world which we love because it's home you know what I mean um, so yeah a few little, little nuggets of uh, information you might like to know about where I'm from and, uh, and who lives there um, I certainly wouldn't class I haven't made it onto the Wikipedia page of the town I'm from. <laughs> That's when you know you've really made it. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day, maybe someone can put that on Wikipedia. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, we've managed to finally get all those out um, and to leave a nice shiny eardrum at the end of that one. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, any questions you've got for me, then let's have a chat in the comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you want to follow the channel, I'd really appreciate that too. But for now, take care of yourselves and I will see you soon. Ta-da.